Hey everyone, it's AP, and today we're making a wine rack. Ooh. Stay tuned. This was a Secret Santa present, and I knew the person was a wine fan and had just recently moved into a new apartment, so this made the most sense to me. I had done a quick Google search for wine racks, and I found a design I really liked. So the first step was to take my measurements. I wanted enough space in each of the holders to accommodate a larger bottle, like the one here. I didn't know my recipient's wine taste, so I went for the largest size possible. Once the measurements were made, it was time to start chopping wood. I wanted to use what I had on hand, so this was made up of 1x2 and 1x8 pine boards. Since I had a lot of cuts that were the same size, I used a scrap 2x4 to act as a block so I could easily pound out all my cuts without having to measure each time. This was a huge time saver. So I only had enough wood uh, on hand to create a three bottle wine rack, which I think is plenty for most people's wine rack purposes. I mean, unless you're, you know, some sommelier or uh, a big wine aficionado, do you really need more than three bottles of wine? Don't answer that question. Uh, okay, so I'm going to start gluing and uh, stapling these together. Uh, the glue and the nails are going to be uh, give this a nice tight bond, uh, and then I will attach these to the backer board um, when they're dry. All right, let's do that. Since my workbench is old, I like to use a scrap piece of plywood as a substrate to make sure everything is level. Resurfacing my workbench is a project for another time. To create the shelves, I simply glued and then nailed everything together. Once all four were complete, I laid them out on the back of the 1x8, making sure I had an equal amount of space in between each shelf. I then marked where each one sat so I could have a visual guide for where my screw holes will go. Well, if we dated in my 20s, you know I like to overkill things. And uh, this wine rack is no exception to the rule. Uh, I am going to countersink screws through the back into the shelf and glue this on so the wine bottles are not going to weigh these down. Uh, so let's start screwing. This can go either really bad or really good. It's holding it. Cool, all right, I'll take it. I call that a win. All right, moving on. We're in the home stretch. To get the angles right for my crossbars, I simply grabbed my half inch finish board scraps and eyeballed the angle, marked with the pencil, and then I took them over to the chop saw. I then glued and nailed each piece in place. I also wanted to cover up the screw holes on the back, so I made some plugs and hammered them in. The sander will take care of the bumps. Finally, I put some putty on the nail holes. After everything dried, I gave it a good sanding with 80 grit paper, working my way up to 220. I then stained it with ebony. Since I was using materials I had on hand, that was my only option, which was great since the person I made it for's color scheme was darker tones. Score. So as you can see, we have some imperfections here. So this is due to, um, I guess I didn't wipe the wood glue in time and the stain couldn't penetrate. So we have this weird glob here. And then up here, I think there's a similar story. I don't know what exactly happened there, if that's wood glue or, or what. And then there's another one down here. So what I'm going to do, I could do a couple things. I could sand this down and then restain, which is perfectly fine. Or I could add some character to this and kind of chip out these pieces. So I think I'm actually going to do that. I'm going to take like my chisel and just kind of chip this out here. Maybe indent that there and uh, see what that, what kind of character that adds to this. Let's see if we get some, some 
there too. So, all right, let's give this a whirl. After addressing the wood glue problem areas, I put on two coats of polyurethane to give it a protective finish. I went with a semi-gloss because, well, that's what I had on hand. To help get a smooth finish, I sanded in between the coats of poly with 400 grit sandpaper and gave it a good wiping with the tack cloth. Last but not least, I put on some hanging hardware. I wanted to make sure my secret Santa recipient had plenty of options for placing this in her new house. I added some wood glue to the screw holes for added stability. We're now ready for the wine bottles. Well, that's it. The wine rack has been delivered to its Secret Santa recipient, and I have to say, she loved it. I mean, after all, the best gifts are the ones that are homemade, right? Well, except for studio scale model kits of the Tanta V4 from the original Star Wars, if you're watching, honey, Christmas is around the corner. This was a fun project to work on because I challenged myself to use materials that I had on hand. I had the wood, I had the glue, I had the stain, I had everything I needed to put this wine rack together. In hindsight, the only thing that I'd change about this is the height of it. When it was finished, it was a little tall, and I erred on the side of caution because I wanted to make sure I was accommodating larger size bottles. But in the end, I gave myself a little too much room, even for the larger bottles, and I could have shaved off an inch and a half or two uh, in each of the slots for the wine bottles. So, something to keep in mind for next time. I think it came out pretty great. Why don't you let me know what you think in the comments below? And don't forget to like this video, share it with your friends and family, and subscribe to the channel, of course. And don't forget to click on that little bell down in the corner there. That notifies you of when new videos are up. Thanks for watching. And again, until next time, stop planning and start making. Thanks, everybody.